Yeah, it's still running. So, task analysis concepts. How do I do it time wise? Quarter to five. We are just three quarters of an hour, right? So we have time. Okay. Um, these are the concepts. This is now serious theory. I want you to understand about tasks, about agents, about roles, about objects, and about events. And, and I claim that any task <laughs> analysis and any task model can be performed if you understand these things and their relations. So we really need to find out what these concepts mean. And with task, we have goals and tasks, we have basic and unit tasks, and we have actions. So, now there will be a lot of theory. Uh, uh, first, let's look at tasks. A task is an activity that has a goal. This is my definition, but it's not just my definition. Anybody who is working in task analysis will tell you each task has a goal. And the goal you could define as a state to reach. My goal is to have a cup of coffee. Which means I intend to have a state which, where I have a cup of coffee. If I have the cup of coffee, I have performed my task. My task is finished. I reached my goal. Okay? Now, um, a goal might be reached through several different tasks. If I want a cup of coffee, I know that Chen Chi has some kind of coffee machine here, I think. At least he promised me something about coffee, so there is something. Alternatively, I could want, uh, I could walk to the uh, 90% a 90 degrees coffee shop and order a coffee or Ellie and I could walk back to our apartment and make a coffee ourselves by heating water and stirring some power so there's different tasks to reach the same goal if my goal is to have a cup of coffee there are several different things I can do so a goal may be reached by several different tasks which means that it depends. It depends on the context, on the environment. Sometimes I choose to make coffee myself. Sometimes I choose to go for a walk to the coffee shop. Sometimes I might go to your office and ask, can we have a coffee together? Right? There's different ways to reach my goal. Okay? If an activity does not have a goal, I don't consider it a task. There are many activities that we perform and that we don't see a goal for. Then I think it's not a task, I should model it differently. Anyhow, important concepts. Tasks are at many different levels. i just give you an example. Maybe I have to write the task to write a book chapter. Actually, I'm writing a book chapter on task analysis. Why not? Now, in order to write a book chapter on task, I have to do many, many, many things. One thing is that sometimes I need to spell check the chapter text to find out whether the text is correct English. And in order to spell check, I need to repair a misspelled word because there is a word that I misspell. I have to. You can see this is different levels. This is a thing that takes me two months, and this is a thing that takes me an evening, and this takes me five seconds. Right? So there are tasks at different levels. And the big task contains a lot of small tasks, and each small task contains even smaller tasks. It's a full hierarchy of tasks. And now we have activities. Activities are tasks or subtasks that I can delegate to somebody else. So, for instance, I'm not very good in spelling in English. My English spelling is lousy. So, if I have finished my chapter, I ask my colleague, could you check the spelling? And then my colleague will have a nasty evening checking my spelling errors, right? So, I can delegate the task to somebody else. And I could even delegate it to a machine. Microsoft Word, by the way, does a nice job in, in uh, spell checking English. As long as you tell them whether it's American English or British English, it's okay. Right? So, you can see, we can delegate tasks, and, and I call them activities. This is just my word. This is a label. An activity is a task that I can delegate to somebody else, or to a machine, or to a group. I could ask the secretariat. The secretariat is, is an office with five secretaries, secretaries. And I can ask them, could you do this for me? Right? So, Sometimes I ask a group, sometimes I ask a person, sometimes I ask a machine. 
And the, I call this an activity. An activity is a package that I would like to delegate sometimes. Now, um, delegating um, could also be mandating. And I make a difference between delegating and mandating. Mandating means that I tell the other person, do it in any way you want. You are the expert. I leave it to you to make it better. And delegating, on the other hand, means that I tell the machine, you should do it according to these rules. You couldn't make any initiative. Microsoft Word should not make any initiatives. If they cannot improve the word, they shouldn't just find a nice word for me, but they should tell me I cannot repair this word. But if I ask the secretariat to do it, they, they know me, they know the domain, and if they find a better word, great, thank you. Mm. Right? So mandating means it's up to the other to perform the activity in any way they do best. So especially if the other person is an expert, I'm happy to mandate. If the other person is not an expert, like Microsoft Word, then I would delegate. And Microsoft Word should behave according to the rules and do nothing else. Okay? This is an important distinction. So, here it's, oh, I was talking and now here it is. Like mandate is where decisions are left to the agent, where agent could be a person or a machine or the department or the secretary, and delegation may be where it should be completely according to the rules, only by default. Yeah? An important decision in task management. <coughs> If the man, the man at the desk in the coffee shop tells the man behind, make an espresso, then the man behind should make an espresso. No, not do funny things with cream and, and chocolate and whatever, right? Because we didn't ask them. Yeah? I think. But I'm not an expert on coffee shops, so you will find out, hopefully. Another one, primary and secondary task. This is, again, a very important distinction. A primary task, that's a generic task. This is a task that I want to do. Like, I want to write a chapter on task analysis for a book. And my primary task is to write the chapter. The task is finished if the chapter is ready. Now, a secondary task is a task that's related to the use of tools. I decided to use a new tool where I can speak to my machine and my machine has voice recognition and my machine will listen to my voice and then write down for me what I'm saying and having no spelling errors. This is a new system, it exists in fact, and, 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 uh, and, but, but using the machine. So speaking slowly and carefully <coughs> to the machine. That's a secondary task, because of the machine, I need to behave differently, right? So, yeah, here, it seems uh, the primary task and the secondary task, uh, in, uh, in other situations, they have other meanings. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, for the usability testing, we could have uh, users to have a primary task, and at the same time, because we want to have uh, more uh, mental uh, load to yeah, the user, yeah, yeah. we could have secondary. So, yeah, 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 that's so a different a concept. Totally that's a completely thing. different concept. Yes. Yeah. 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 But, but um, so, so let, let, me, let me give an example of, of what I want to say here. Uh, let, that the secretary in the secretary office is in most of the time responsible for, uh, for communication support. So, so for, for making sure that messages get uh, delivered, right? Now, if, if you would ask a secretary in, in, in my country at least like uh, 20 years ago, what do you, will you do on Friday? She will tell you that on Friday she will go to the post office and buy stamps, these little squares that you can stick to an envelope, and she would make sure there are enough envelopes and there's enough paper with letterhead stationery in the office so that on Monday the communication can go forward. And she says, this is one of my primary tasks to prepare communication. If I ask the secretary today in my office in Amsterdam and I say, what are you doing on Friday evening before you go home? She will say, I go to the mailboxes and I will look in the mailbox to see whether there's any urgent message that has not been responded yet and I will put it in a separate folder and I will throw away messages that are no longer relevant 
So she is telling a completely different story, meaning that sometimes the person herself doesn't know whether this is primary or secondary. If we step back and we look at the secretary 20 years ago and the secretary now, we say, oh, your primary task is preparing for communication, making sure that on Monday morning everybody can send messages. And the secondary task 20 years ago was going to the post office to buy stamps and going to the storeroom to buy and stationery. And today's secondary task is to, to look at the mailboxes and make sure that the mailboxes are tidied up. So this is our distinction. And why is this important? Well, it's important between secondary tasks are just because of the technology. If the technology will be different, the secondary tasks could change. If you are redesigning, so on Friday or Thursday when we are reconsidering the coffee shop, if you are redesigning, you could take a secondary task, throw it out of the window and make a new one. But you should not change the primary tasks, because this is the task of the shop they want to do. Right? So the primary tasks is to have their own original goal. And the secondary tasks are just because of the technology. They can be changed. So this is completely different. So keep this in mind. Right? So and then there's the, the basic and the unit task. A user's unit tasks is the smallest task a user can speak about. So, uh, for instance, uh, if, if you ask a secretary how she is handling uh, writing a letter, she will tell you that she, uh, she takes a, 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 a document, uh, she puts the content in, she puts the date on, and then she goes to the boss for a signature. And, and she can, about the content, she can tell you a lot, and about the signature, she will tell you, I ask for a signature. And, and asking for a signature is a unit task. She cannot tell you that how to split it up. There's no smaller one than asking for a signature. So this is a user's unit task. Now there's a system's basic task. And a system's basic task is the smallest task that the system is willing to perform for you. So uh, the, the, when, when I leave, for instance, Microsoft Word, the system wants me to say whether I want to save the file or not. It's not I who is deciding, but the system wants me to do this. I have to say yes or no, otherwise the system won't quit Word. So this is a system's basic task. Right? It's the smaller task, and the two, in many cases, don't match. Which is okay as long as you are aware, especially as a designer, you should be aware. And designers can easily change basic tasks. If you want to change basic tasks, if you would do a default save, why not? But don't change unit tasks, because this is the things that people really have in mind as the atomic activities they want to do. Right? So this, it's up for the designer to make it better. And this you just have to support as a designer. Okay, so this is why the, this distinction again is important. I always want to. Okay, um, actions. Well, an action, this is just my definition. An action is something that has no goal. And the meaning depends on the task it is part of. For instance, if you are using a laptop like this one, you can hit the return key. Hitting the return key, what does it mean? Well, if you are in command mode or if typing in Linux, hitting the return key means end of the command. If you are in a spreadsheet in Excel, hitting the return key means go to the next cell in the same column. If you are entering text in Word, hitting the return key means that you get a return coded in the text string. So hitting the return key has a meaning, but the meaning is completely different depending on. And Consequently, I don't know, I will not label this a task. Hitting the return key is an action, but it's not a task. It doesn't have its own goal. It's part of something. But as a designer, you still have to design it. Because instead of hitting the return key, you could say, stamp in your feet, right? If we just design a system that, this could mean any of these, right? So, but, but as a designer, be aware that nobody says, my goal is to hit a return key. No. It has a meaning in most cases, but the meaning could be completely different. 